welcome, welcome everyone. Um, back to Lessons Learned. Uh, my name is Obed Figueroa. I am the founder of Diversity Pre-Medical. Uh, and I'm so happy today to bring to you another esteemed guest uh, to share his story, his experience, um, so that we all may benefit from the lessons he's learned. Okay. Um, Dr. Brandt attended the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, uh, graduating with a bachelor's degree in nutrition science. Uh, he then attended uh, New York University School of Medicine and graduated in 2011. He then completed his residency in orthopedic surgery at Carolines, Carolina's Medical Centers, hyphen um, Ortho Carolinas in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, he's currently a pediatric orthopedic surgery fellow at Children's Hospital in Colorado. His personal story includes, in part, being adopted uh, as a toddler into a very diverse and unique home where there were nine adopted children, five Korean, four black, in addition uh, to the three biological children, which made the Brandt 12. Um, he and his siblings were raised in a small town in Nebraska. Uh, Dr. Brandt has had a very unique path to medicine and his personal story is fascinating and filled with experiences that we can all learn from. So thank you, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Sure, so the way in which we start uh, is by going through some speed questions just to get to know you beyond the sciences, beyond uh, practice of medicine. Uh, so if you could just, as I fly through it, just for a minute or so, uh, give me your first response. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> All righty. Um, so uh, PC or Mac? Uh, I'm a Mac. Okay. Android or iPhone? iPhone, yeah. Everything, everything's connected, yeah. <laughs> your favorite season? Fall, like, uh, end of summer, fall. Okay. Uh, your favorite vacation spot? Um, honestly, anywhere. Uh, uh, when I get to vacation time, it's, I, I could probably go anywhere and be pretty comfortable, but I do not mind uh, beach and ocean. Okay. All righty. Uh, so your favorite restaurant? Um, I do not have one. I really like Thai food, and that was what I got into uh, while I was in New York. So uh, okay. a, any Thai restaurant is where, where I usually uh, veer to. So I'm curious if there's a, if you think of food in this way, if there is a favorite food or dessert that you indulge in and when you afterwards you feel guilty. Oh, no, never, never guilt. <laughs> I, I have not hit the guilt uh, problem yet. I have a really bad problem with candy. Um, and anybody who knows me knows that. And my candy right now is uh, Mamba. Um, and I actually just finished a uh, pack on my way home today. So. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I, I guess I kind of feel guilty because I'm getting older and I'm probably going to self-induce diabetes. So Dr. <laughs> Brandt is not a very good patient. <laughs> okay. Um, your favorite TV show? Um, right now, I'm not sure I have one. Um, I was big into Lost in the Past, um, New Girl. Um, but yeah, I haven't gotten into anything. I think once I hit residency, I decided I was going to stop uh, mm -hmm. binging. Gotcha. Um, so what about your favorite movie? Do you have one? Um, so I have about 400 movies in my own collection. So I'm a big uh, movie person. Um, whenever I ask, get asked that question, I usually say Independence Day or a movie called Conspiracy Theory. Okay. Um, it's got Mel Gibson and Julia Roberts and uh, an older movie, but um, I can put those two movies in at any time and um, enjoy it. Mm. Um, favorite music genre? Um, again, all over the map. Uh, <laughs> but I would say probably just kind of 90s hip hop, rap, um, R&B. And then I'm a real big Chris Stapleton fan. So um, that's a little bit of that Midwest. Uh, coming through but uh, he was part of Steel Drivers in the past and I was a big fan of them and then he went out on his own and that voice special. Mm, okay um, so your favorite car? Um, I don't have any I drive Toyotas and I think I'll probably continue to do uh, that uh, till I die because they're very reliable and um, 
just super easy to easy to maintain. So I'd I'd probably say Toyota. I know that's not fancy. Okay. Um, so when you think of high school, your favorite subject and teacher, if it's one of the same, may, may not be. Favorite subject. Um, I'm not really sure where I would say my favorite subject was. Uh, one of my favorite teachers was Mrs. Johnson. She was one of the English teachers that I had, but just very nice, um, very direct. Mm -hmm. uh, not a lot of question marks uh, with, with how she uh, worked with us. So um, I enjoyed her and uh, really, really liked her. And I also throw in Miss Sidek. She was another one of my English teachers. And I cannot say English is my favorite subject, which is kind of uh, incredible, but um, they tended to be the best uh, teachers for me. Okay. Now, when you think about your undergrad, um, was there any professor that really impressed you? Oh, for sure. I, I had a lot um, in undergrad, actually, but one that really stuck out, and again, a subject that I did not uh, particularly like, but uh, Will Thomas um, at the University of Nebraska mm -hmm. was a history teacher that I had, um, and he had one of those big classes, undergrad classes, you know, 100 to 200 kids, mm -hmm. uh, but just got up every day and just loved what he did, mm -hmm. um, and it made it very easy for us to love what uh, what he loved um so it was really really impressive to watch and really kind of has uh been kind of a uh model for me um when i'm teaching because that's something i definitely uh, love to do but um i think step one to being a good teacher is enjoying what you do yourself um and he really uh showed that uh to me um and one of my other classmates we actually uh, wrote him afterwards and uh, thanked him for that nice nice all right well thanks for sharing that thanks for sharing yeah absolutely all right so let's let's do the dive um so if we were to go back because i i try to like try to put this in order so that they could understand your progression right your walk mm -hmm. and when was the first time you started thinking about the sciences at what stage was that uh it was in high school and this is uh a story that people will try not to get me to, to tell, but it's uh, <laughs> interesting. Um, so Lost, uh, that show that I talked about, um, was actually uh, one of the reasons I went into medicine. Interesting. Um, I was a junior um, when that show came out, and I thought it was going to be just like a TV version of Jurassic Park or something, something dumb and mindless that I could just watch and get into. Mm -hmm. um, and that first episode uh, was this big disaster scene um, where, I mean, everything was going wrong. Mm -hmm. And the person that kind of snapped into action and took over uh, the situation and was helping people uh, was the, the doctor on that show. Mm -hmm. um, and at that point, I was trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life. Uh, I was starting to get uh, kind of repetitive injuries in sports, and that was not looking good. Um, and I had a lot of kind of different things that I, I liked a little bit, um, but I wasn't sure. And a lot of things that I was kind of good at, but um, then it really kind of wasn't obvious to me. Mm -hmm. uh, but right. But when I saw him, I was like, that's what I want. That's who I want to be. Um, I want to be the person that's there already um, high stakes. Um, and that was kind of when I, when I made that decision, that being said, um, they don't have any physicians in the family. I didn't have a lot of exposure to doctors other than my own, um, mm -hmm. who I didn't always have a great uh, relationship with because we're the people that are holding people out of sports and things like that. So um, I was not a fan of that. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't really have a lot of exposure. And it was kind of like a, a little bit of when I told my parents, they were kind of like, oh, yeah, uh, you want to do what? Um, sounds good, like whatever. But um, wasn't no one no one was really saying like, Oh, that's a real good idea. Um, go for it. But, mm. um, but that was kind of that first step. Um, and then sports kind of helped me get into college. And then mm. from there, it just kind of took off. So let's stay with high school just for a moment. Cause I'm curious. Yeah. All right. So that became your, you know, your interest at that stage. Um, the sciences, like, were you experiencing any challenges going into it or it kind of came naturally for you? It was not that much of a struggle wondering. Um, I'd say on, from a, for, I'd say math was probably my best subject as far as just ease. Um, sciences were not hard. It was just, I mean, 
anybody who does pre-med, you know, that you got to go through the biology, you got to go through some of these that, um, it's, it's just such a diverse field and area. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a lot of different avenues that you can go, but you have to do it all, um, to start there, to, to, to go into medicine. I had to do every pre-med course. So, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was not, it was not like easy. I wouldn't say that I just went through and Mm -hmm. just zoomed through, but, um, it was just part of the, the coursework and in high school, um, in a small town, you just kind of go, you know, like, it's not like we're doing a whole bunch of AP courses or things like that. You take your courses, you go through, mm-hmm. um, like I said, I, I enjoyed English and I, that was probably one of my, my better uh, subjects as well. So, um, again, it was in high school, it was not really obvious, um, that that was what I was going to do. And it wasn't a common thing for people to say like, Oh, I'm going to go and be a doctor and, and make that decision. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. So you were the, you, you know, small minority, if, if any, uh, expressing that. Um, and so did you, did you express that to any of your teachers in high school, that that was an interest of yours? Or? Oh, a little bit, not particularly though. Again, it just wasn't a common thing. Um, and I it, it didn't, didn't, there was no one obvious that I was just going to reach out to, um, uh, to help me with that. I, I had one teacher, uh, like I had mentioned before, Ms. Seidick, who was my English teacher, who helped me with essays and things like that when mm-hmm. I was getting later in the process. Right. Um, proofreading and just stuff like that. But um, as far as the past, the pre-med work, kind of getting there, uh, yeah, I didn't really have anybody. I, I did have a classmate um, who was also very interested in medicine um, and he was a good friend of mine. Uh, so that was kind of a nice thing for both of us was to have that. Cause again, it wasn't a common thing, yeah. um, coming out of our, our, our town or our school, um, uh, yeah. to do, to do that. Now you mentioned, um, that you were adopted in a household of 12. And, and yep. so I, I bring that up only because, I mean, since a toddler, that was truly your family. There was no mystery about, you know, that there was the love. It was cult, you know, over the years just grew and grew. And so that, that's your siblings straight up. Um, so of a household of 12, let's just say, um, and you said that very diverse, different cultures, but you guys had your own, I'm sure, <laughs> your own Brent family culture, right? And then you had the ethnicities. What was that experience like for you being a, in a household of 12? Um, it was, it was awesome. Um, in all honesty, I mean, it was, it was hard. Uh, obviously you got 12 different people, um, very, very rough backgrounds too. Um, one of the things my dad used to say is that he only took the kids that no one else wanted, Mm -hmm. um, or, or didn't have another place to go. Um, and that was true. And that was something we knew from the start as well. So not only did I have two white parents, uh, in a, the small town in Nebraska that's all white people as well so Mm -hmm. obvious obvious that I I was brought in uh to that situation right um but there was no there was no uh veil over kind of our 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 past and our backgrounds and they never hid that from us um so I I mean one of my sisters went through multiple uh foster homes um one was abandoned um and and found our found their way here one was from korea and sick and in an orphanage um and and wasn't going to survive without uh uh, being adopted and 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 getting a stable home Mm -hmm. um but that was never hidden um and never never a question so i i think that was what a real benefit of the situation that we grew up in is we we all grew up knowing um kind of exactly it is what it is yeah. Um, and you had to kind of develop that comfort in your own skin. Um, and we all did it very differently. We all struggled in different ways at different mm-hmm. times. Mm-hmm. Um, we watched each other go through it. Some of us took help. Some of us didn't, you know? Yeah. So I would um, say, you know, I, no, no one's life is perfect. Right. And so yeah. I wonder as a man, when you look back and reflect, um, how do, how would you say that that experience shaped you to who you are today? Uh, just to, just in that in that nature, um, I feel like I've been able to go through this process with a level of authenticity and, and comfort mm-hmm. um, that is is hard to come by because everyone wants to kind of fit into the mold and check the boxes to get to a certain stage. So, like pre med students um, in medical school trying to get into residency, you wanna you wanna check everybody's 
box to make sure that you fit what they are wanting and looking for. Mm -hmm. And I obviously did that, but I also went through and, and, and could do it as me um, just because I didn't really, I don't really know how to do it otherwise. And I -hmm. think just growing up in that situation helped, helped me. I had to do it then. There was just no question about it. Um, And I had the whole, like our family was awesome and and I love it. And I I like my hometown. Um, Went through a lot, grew up a lot with, with them. And I still have a lot of close friends, but they really did help me develop a lot of comfort. So when I went to move to New York, um, it didn't feel like this big shocking thing, even though everyone asks, like, how was that transition? I'm like, it was just fine. Um, I liked New York and um, I was Aaron in New York. That was just the only difference. And, mm-hmm. and so yeah, um, I think that that's what it gave me, a little yeah. bit of more comfort. Yeah, I have assumption, and you correct me if I'm wrong, that your empathy development was probably fostered through that too. Um, you know, not coming from a, a space where there was challenges, there was diversity, you know, and at such an early age, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And mm. the things, the things that we dealt with were things that, I mean, just kids uh, typically don't. And just different, I guess, different versions of things that kids go through uh, growing up and developing, but it was it definitely just was different. And so, yeah, absolutely. I think empathy and, and, uh, awareness and kind of uh eq if you will yeah, um yeah yeah um that type of stuff i feel like i my my lens is a little bit different than everyone else's yeah and it's helped and i like it really was something that was valuable uh when i went to nyu for medical school and i could offer them something very different and be a part of a part of that community and uh, kind of every stage and that's something that i've learned is something i really have to kind of uh take control of and and continue to be a part of the conversation because it is valuable um what i learned awesome so now you're okay so you're ending high school you're going you're preparing for undergrad um and your parents um did they go to college yes yeah they went to a college in nebraska yes okay uh so who who was your mentors to prepare you to go to undergrad who were you working with I didn't really have any. Um, I was more of a athlete more than student. I was a student athlete, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think athletics was kind of where everyone's focus was uh, with me mm-hmm. um, and kind of my, me included. Um, it was always I was keeping my grades up and, and working hard so that I had opportunities and doors opened. Um, but that being said, Sports were kind of were kind of the the part that that I was focused on. So and you say sports, teach, so you're plural. So which which sports? I played basketball um, initially. Um, I went to Creighton University to start my undergrad, um, and then I uh, ended up getting an injury and uh, transferring to the University of Nebraska and finishing up. So okay. at Creighton, you know, you play basketball. It's about four or five hours a day where it's focused on basketball. Wow. And then I get home and I work on my classes i was taking 18 19 credits uh all the semesters there so i'm really just kind of grinding it out um i even even like the uh sports um the the academic sports uh aids um didn't have a lot of pre-med students in the athletic department Mm -hmm. um especially not on the basketball team so um when i was doing work on road trips like they weren't they weren't I wasn't a focus because they knew I was doing doing the work or, or getting my stuff done. So there's a lot of self-motivation from that standpoint. And then I would utilize the, the advisors um, when I needed them or um, when the time came that, that people were essentially telling me I needed them. Um, so I, it just wasn't, I didn't have a lot of guidance. I can't say that I was thinking, seeking it out either, which is something that looking back, I, I think was a, just a, short-sightedness in, in my mind um mm-hmm. but i mean it ended yeah. up uh working out so yeah so i'm going to dig into that undergrad experience um because yeah, please. even if you you didn't you didn't seek out a lot of guidance i'm, I'm wondering I, i'd like to understand what your thinking was at that point i mean you walk in the doors of undergrad um how did you figure out how to manage if you did it independently like how did you do it uh, when you had challenges, what did you do? 
So I think for the pre-med path, it's um, back when I was doing it, it was pretty clear. You had to you had to check those those boxes. So we had eight core courses for pre-med, and then you had your additional things. So I learned that quickly and had uh, and got an advisor that that informed me of that. So that's what I did. Mm -hmm. That's why my caseload was so like my uh, course load was so heavy early on. Is I just just like oh this is what I'm supposed to do. I'll do it. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Um, when I went to the University of Nebraska, I definitely shifted. Like that's when it kind of shifted for me. Like my sport, the sports stuff was, it just wasn't gonna happen. Um, and so I, I definitely knew that that was what I needed to do. That's when I kind of realized that I needed to lock in, um, if you will, and 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 work harder. I, getting letters of recommendation, um, get MCATs, you know, like all this stuff. I was just suddenly like, bam. Uh, now it's all becoming very real so mm -hmm. um, I definitely sought out guidance at that point and honestly I was kind of hit with a lot of resistance um I had one advisor say like I showed her my stuff and she essentially just goes you're not going to get into med school um <laughs> I've heard that and I, and I and I was just like well watch me like and then now now it suddenly was a challenge and and like I went from there you know um and she had, she actually ended up being my my advisor all the way through because I was I was like that's awesome like she became like this adversary and also in my corner um, in the end but it was just like all right like watch and so I I really used um, I really used my classmates I I think that that's probably the best best thing to say is I I a lot of I did end up uh, developing really good friendships with classmates and um, we kind of went through that road together. Um, I did the MCAT course uh, online because I just didn't have time to do it in person, mm -hmm. um, which was a little challenging uh, just from an attention standpoint. But um, did you take it so more like, than once? I just I took it once, and I actually made that decision. I I was gonna take the score that I got. <laughs> um, if it wasn't the number that I wanted, um, the minimum number that I wanted, I was gonna move on. And I I, I had I was looking into other jobs and nutrition based jobs and, and, and things like that, just in case. Um, but I just made that decision. I, I wasn't going to mess around with it. Um, and if it didn't work out, then I was going to move, move forward. Um, but that's kind of just how like my mind has always worked. It was just challenge in front of me. I do my best. If it doesn't work out, then it wasn't made for it. And that's the, on all honesty, it's a, it's a very, such a hard thing to do going into medicine. I cannot imagine being a uh, pre-med at this point, just with how hard and how the grade, grades have to be, the, the scores. And um, so I get that. And mm -hmm. for me, if it didn't work out, I was going to find my way to make an impact in, an, in another arena. I wasn't going to keep spinning my wheels um, in an area um, just because I, I wasn't sure. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can't say that I was 100% sure that this was what I needed to be doing. Um, so I, I kind of let, let go and let God, if you will. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. Um, and so you're moving through undergrad um, and you mentioned that you did pair up with a couple of buddies and, and did some study groups, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. One of my main, <clears throat> one of my main study groups that actually took off and really kind of became like my group uh, was through an anatomy class. And so we spent a lot of extra time in the lab. Um, it was really nice because one of our, one of the, the people in the group really struggled with physics or, or one of us really struggled with anatomy. And so we really kind of picked each other up and pulled it, pulled each other along, um, nice. which I thought was cr very critical. And we all ended up getting into medical school. We all, you know, so mm -hmm. um, in the end, I really think we, we really, kind of built each other up enough to to get there. One, one went to DO, um, one is in an orthopedic surgery. Uh, he actually just took a job in uh, Massachusetts area. Um, so it's, that was, that was very critical for me, especially in that early part where I, I was being classic Aaron and just kind of just doing it and uh, haters, uh, <laughs> haters beware. Uh, mm. But, but I always had that that core group, and I, I kind of benefited from their type A, uh, working with their mentors and their their advisors, um, and then I kind of just 
glean stuff from them through osmosis and, and just being around them. So um, that so, was uh, the very helpful. Yeah. So before we jump into to grad, um, I'm, I'm curious between your high school and undergrad, when you're making this walk, when you were going through that walk, um, have you ever internalized and felt, you know, like the only, whether it be the only one pursuing sciences or the only one of color or the only, have you ever experienced that? If so, how have you dealt with that? Um, every stage. Um, yes. So I was the only black person um, for a, a lot of time other than my siblings mm -hmm. in our hometown. Um, I was one of few that had this aspiration uh, to go into medicine. So I, I, I kind of get why people were, would question that I, that I was going to be able to do it. Um, Cause it wasn't, I was there and I was the athlete um, and no one had seen that, that I, that was something that I was, I was shooting for. So mm -hmm. I kind of get, I get it. And even getting up to that pre-med advisor and undergrad, like I get her response mm -hmm. is, is she saw this person who hadn't been seeing her for, three years straight once a week. And I just stroll in and tell her, this is what I want to do. Um, so I get that. Um, so, but just hearing that, hearing those types of comments is really kind of what fueled me a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, and what I learned later on and what I've really kind of uh, jumped into is there are a lot of places um, for people of color, for, for uh, really anybody, absolutely to find help and to find support and i didn't and it's my fault in all honesty for not seeking it out i just assumed i was kind of on an island because that's how <laughs> i felt for the majority of my upbringing was i may have had a wonderful awesome family but again just like there's no denying this the setting that i grew up in the situation that i grew up in right um even within my family we have teachers um beauticians um we, we just didn't have medicine. So it's kind of like this left, this Aaron out of left field just decides he wants to be a doctor. It still was just kind of like, okay, <laughs> um, good luck. <laughs> um, and so it's like one of those things. And when I graduated medical school, I remember my mom saying essentially like, I cannot believe you actually did this. And it was just like, me neither. Like, yeah, like it, was, it, it was great. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but it, yeah, so I've, I don't know. I kind of live in that space. And I think that that's one of my, my vices, if you will, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is I tend to go into this f fight mode um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a little too quickly. And I think a lot of my, like, my close friends and, and the mentors I have now um, have helped me kind of work through that and understand that I have to, you have to ask for help and you have to seek these things out. Um, because they are there and so that's why this is such an important thing is like yeah. you're putting content out there to say like you guys are not alone mm -hmm. there are a lot of different avenues um and we're here for you and i think that that's kind of how things get better so no, absolutely. yeah I, yeah yeah i i when i as i listen to you and you correct me if i'm wrong i really feel like you have that there's something about athletes man it's like it what you acquire as an athlete, like it just transfers over into, <laughs> into other spaces. And it's like, you know, oh yeah? Oh I, yeah, I, I know how to train to accomplish. You just give yeah. me Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I, that's one of the funny things is I, I feel like athletes, yeah, there are a lot of things, athletes, military, I think like those types of, uh, the, those types of paths do, do offer some things. Some people get frustrated that like, oh, another athlete in med school or um, athlete in orthopedic, like how cliche can I be? Um, <laughs> but in the end, like there are, there are really, really beneficial things to the team, uh, to, to that perseverance, that physical grind, um, just all those little things. So um, I definitely picked up so much from the sports aspects that I use every day mm. um, that have nothing to do with physical or sports. Um, but definitely, yeah, I, I mean, that's just – even just re repeating my story today, I'm like going back in my mind. I'm like, I just had opponents mm -hmm. up until like midway through pre-med. Um, and honestly, at every stage I, I, I tend to find, find that opponent that I, is going to fuel me um, to, to do better. And it, so it, it's definitely something it's, I don't seek it out, but, <laughs> but if it's there, I'm like, 
Like, <laughs> this is familiar. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, okay, so let's move forward. Uh, so now uh, you start applying to med schools. Um, did you apply for osteopathic, allopathic? I mean, did you do both or just, just one? I just did um, allopathic. And um, again, eh, just I go back in my mind. I'm just like, man, you're an idiot. Um, just the way, the way I was thinking, the way I was going is, is my, my mind, I just saw, allo, I just only saw really allopathic and that yeah, was yeah. kind of the, the target. Um, yeah. when I know like there's just, there's so many different ways to, to skin a cat. Um, if this is the, this is the career and the path that you want to do. So I only did allopathic and again, kind of same thing with my MCAT score. I kind of set that as the, as the bar and I was set that out and see what happens so yeah. but i did apply kind of all over the country and just kind of cast a very wide net um and yeah it was just kind of like see where i land see where the pieces fall yeah i was recruiting in 2005 six i didn't see your name so <laughs> yeah, yeah i missed you it, yeah yeah <laughs> um, so orthopedic i mean so surgery um so what kind of inspired that um, I think the obvious thing, obvious, the, the yeah. athlete, athletics, and just I've I've had so many injuries over the years, and and um, spent a lot of time in there. And to be really honest, I really hated orthopedic surgeons. Uh, I just saw them again as just people that had helped me, held me out, and it's my body had failed so many times. Mm. So I actually was going to go into pediatrics, just general peds, up until about third year of medical school, actually. Gotcha. And I had talked to um, advisors. I had gotten letters. Um, so I was almost 100% um, going that direction. Mm -hmm. And I did my orthopedics rotation um, kind of at the last minute and two days in. I mean, I had worked like 18, 20 hour days and like real tired. And I just was just like, damn, like this mm -hmm. is what I, I, I got I to gotta switch. And again, it just felt right. And it felt good gotcha and the strengths that i had fit you know mm -hmm. um so i made that switch at the very last second um again sought out some really good advisors and had some really good support um to make that change um and that was kind of when i kind of realized that i'm for sure this is i'm in the right spot and i'm doing the right thing um and this is what i was meant to be doing so it was, it was nice it was good so if I may ask you, um, while you're in med school, um, did you have to make adjustments from undergrad to med school, like in the way in which you uh, managed your time and, and studies? For sure. Yeah, in, in undergrad, I used to, I call it free nights and weekends uh, was, was my goal. <laughs> um, so I worked really hard and this was kind of that, that athlete schedule again. Um, but I tried to work eight to five or six was my grind time so i'd have my classes um and then i would library or home or whatever and get my stuff done get get ahead um for the next day um but i wanted my nights i wanted my weekends free mm -hmm. in my me in medical school it's it's just completely different and i think every medical school is a little bit different um uh, in structure at nyu we did um you could do online um classes and i started out doing that and then about three, four months in, I actually switched and started going back to class because that didn't work for me. So mm -hmm. um, that was something interesting just to just to have to tease through that um, a little bit. I almost had too much time in medical school um, now that I didn't have other, other things going on. So that was a big challenge for me, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, time management and trying to figure out where I needed to put my energy um, and how much and, and, and everything. Uh, so that was, yeah, it was, it was a little bit difficult, but NYU was nice. It was a good, it was a good setup, a good structure and had a fair amount of extra time for us. Um, and what really helped me through medical school was honestly getting into some extracurriculars again, okay. uh, very similar to undergrad um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. was, was kind of just kind of put my energy in different places so that when I came back to studies, it was study time and, mm -hmm. and, and time to lock in again. So um, that was a very important thing and something I would definitely recommend for everybody is you may have this goal and you may have this objective, but in the end, we have to 
find ways to fill fill our cup and and to re-energize and it's it's not your studies even if it's your favorite thing in the world um the greatest thing that you've ever done is is read a book mm. about the foot you know like you have to have other things that are going to make you uh excited and kind of re-energize you to come back um so that was something that I, I definitely had to learn very nice could you give me um a day in the life for you um now in your fellowship yeah i mean fellowship for me um it's really it's really good um so fellowship uh, for those who don't don't have a great understanding of things uh at this point or if you're early on which i did not um again uh residency is is really focused on kind of the orthopedic surgery and kind of learning everything fellowship is now i'm just specifically working on kids um and as a fellow your focus is really trying to build into uh, a practitioner so you're kind of that that next step towards being um faculty so i really it's, it's really nice you, i get a focus on surgery um so i'm in the operating room four or five days a week uh usually mm -hmm. um which is not uh typical um in both practice or in uh earlier training um so i really get to focus my time there so i wake up i don't know about 5 30 every morning mm -hmm. um go see patients, uh, inpatients that I have. We have academic conference in the morning um, and then it's to the OR and it could be till three, it could be till seven, eight, nine o'clock at night. Um, but it's just working on kids um, with different conditions and just trying to doing what, I, what I'm doing for, for the rest of my life. So it's, it's really nice. Yesterday I had a day in the trauma room. So mm. I had, girl that got in a car accident had a girl that fell off a slide um, with multiple injuries um, another one that just fell off jumping on the bed and fell so um, but it's fun it, it really is a cool career um, very very fulfilling um, and and yeah, you, tire, tiring and and, uh, and a lot but well worth it yeah you just made me think of something that I'm I know it's it's part of your training uh, if not um I'm sure mentorship helped. The question I would have, I wonder if someone would have reservations of going into that space because they would be concerned about how they would internalize dealing with those cases. Like, so how, how so if anyone is having any ambivalence, like how, what would you suggest to them? Like, this is how you, you know, process dealing with those kind of cases mentally. I, I mean, I, I think at that stage um, in career and training, it, it really is kind of a, you have to know yourself and know that, know your, how you feel. It's, it's kind of like a, an oncologist. Mm -hmm. um, not everyone can do oncology. That, that's really hard patients and a really, really hard conditions to deal with. But, um, and, and a lot of people want peds in there because no one wants to see kids get hurt and things like that. Yeah. And for me, I've always just, again, like you had mentioned earlier, that I think the empathy and kind of what I learned from growing up, uh, I migrate towards that type of stuff. I just think it, that's what I want for my life. I want to be there for people in the hard times, and I want to give people hope when they didn't have any. And that's a lot of some conditions are like that, when, when cerebral palsy, like things like that, the so conditions that are really can be very devastating. Mm -hmm. Our goal is to make them, uh, to give them the best life that they can have. And so I, I did run into those issues early on, uh, fear um, of some of those, like when I would see a patient like that, I was like, first of all, am I smart enough to like uh, deal with, deal with that type of stuff? Mm -hmm. um, and then it, then it became like, oh, do I, like, uh, I was nervous, like, how do I interact and then how do I deal with it? And just as I went through training, I just developed a little bit more comfort. And again, I just went back to being myself because that ultimately is is what what matters in the process and what matters for these families and these kids. Mm -hmm. The people that can be comfortable and and be themselves in these settings are the ones that are probably going to be uh, best at, at dealing with it. And so, I, I just found that that's what I wanted uh, for my life. And and people will talk about peds and they're like, oh, the parents like overbearing parents. And I'm like, in my mind overbearing parents is a beautiful beautiful thing to see it's the parents that aren't showing up for the, the child abuse cases that i just like yeah. my blood boils a little bit so like mm -hmm. that that was kind of when i realized peds is definitely something that's the patient population that i really want to be 
uh, working with. Okay. Um, and it is hard. It, that's just, it kind of is what it is. But in all honesty, kids are the most resilient people in the world. They haven't developed that, what was me, uh, mm -hmm. adult mentality. And um, so they're, they're wonderful patients and the families are, are great to work with, um, even when they're, they're pushing. And, and so that was just something I, I learned over time. And it's not for everybody. And I think that that's part of this process is kind of finding where you um, fit in and not forcing it. Gotcha. All right. So thank you so much. Um, yeah. I do want to say uh, if you could talk to your younger self or either, or either someone that is in high school or undergrad, I know there's two different spaces, but do you have any little advice that we haven't said, that we haven't touched on? Um, yeah, I think uh, just knowing uh, the people that you're reaching, I, I think my biggest thing and what I've learned over time and I mean, nothing, nothing works for everybody and, and there's no right, one right way to do this. Right. I think I, I proved that um, at every stage. <laughs> um, but just be, again, authenticity and being yourself is, is just super important. Mm -hmm. um, I think at every stage when I really struggled and where I really hit the wall and was really questioning if I was meant to do this or what I was doing, I was getting way too much into what everyone else was telling me or or what I was doing or reading into things that weren't even being being said, you know, okay. and what got me through it every time was coming back to just focusing on the things that I was good at, focusing on the things that I enjoyed that that mattered um, to me. And mm. it was kind of getting out of that that mold and, and and realizing that medicine is a I mean, it needs to be a divorce diverse field. So if we're if we're churning out the same person 100 times that's not how medicine should look. And, and I think that that's what's important. We need these people, we need diversity in, in the medical profession. And I think it's becoming more and more obvious to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and we just can't, you can't stop. If this is what you want to do, don't let people push you out, push you out of, out of the field and push you out of this um, from an aspirational standpoint um, because we need you. So um, find the people that are going to support you and help you find the people that are going to challenge you, um, uh, to be better and to grow, um, and you'll be fine. All righty. Well, thank you so much again, Dr. Brent. I appreciate your time so, so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. This ends this episode. Um, and I look forward to seeing you guys again next week. All right. Take care. Mm -hmm.